guys so we have just made it to culture in atlanta so we are going to take you on an experience never been here before but let's see what it is all about this is the outside of the building uh oh i hear the music already so we're definitely going to just have to walk you through the experience i'm here with my crew hey 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 Hey. hey! 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 What's your name? I'm Chris. I'm Chris. Look. <laughs> Okay, um, we're at the MLK Memorial. We are gonna take a walk. Um, a lot of places are actually closed, but we are going to take you behind the scenes of the neighborhood. So it's pretty light, private residence, neighborhood pride. So here's the strip of homes in which MLK grew up on. They used to do a tour at his home right there so we can like walk over there but i don't believe we may be able to go back in oh they have a store so we can probably go to the park store and see what they have and then we'll actually take a walk down to the church and to the memorial home where he grew up and we're gonna walk over to the store to see So here's where he was born. Porch. Oh, Avery took a picture right here when he was one. Memories. We have to bring both kids back. So yes, this used to be open where we were actually at one point able to tour the house but we can't do that anymore maybe one day we can bring it back my grandma and I used to have this porch in Arkansas like the swing <laughs> and then we have the Garth of the home built in 1895 and they have areas where you can sit on the porch it's a big porch look at this neighborhood too. He walked to the store. I see him walking so look at We got the store here. We're gonna go into the store, see what they have. They have some books, gifts, souvenirs it looks like. However, we would need to go to the car and get a mask.
closed. And um, I wonder if the whole thing open or is that or is it just a gift shop? Let's see. We're gonna check it out. But you see, freedom to participate in government, freedom to prosper in life. That's what I'm talking about. I love it. I love coming here. This makes you feel at peace. It makes you feel alive again, great again, of how much work was done and how much work, how much work still needs to be done. Oh, I don't know. It might only be the gift shop that's open. All right, so you guys, I thought we were gonna be able to go into the freedom area, but it doesn't look like it's open. Darn. Well, let's walk this way. So they, so they say that he's buried there. You want a picture right here? Huh? Yeah. Memorial. So I'm gonna say every time I come to this one, definitely want to go to the DC one. I feel at peace. Feel great. Also a little sad. Um, just to kind of even like walk near the home and know the history. Um, you know, it just brings up a lot of emotions, especially as we have seen things happen across our lifetime, current date. Things have definitely gotten better, but we have a lot more work to do. So we will not be satisfied until justice goes down like the water. Well. and righteousness. Like a mighty stream. Pictures. And then I'm gonna get up close to the tombstone. 1929 and 1968 and 2006. Some of their lasting words, surrounded by a beautiful pool of water. The green lives, the legacy continues. It's so peaceful. Means. So the external flame symbolizes and continuing the continuing effort to realize that the king's ideas for the love community, which requires lasting personal commitment that cannot be shared when faced with obstacles. So we are entering into his six principles of non-violence. Let's head down and see what they are. So six principles of nonviolence, 365. Principle one, nonviolence is a way of life for courageous people. Principle two, nonviolence seeks to win friendships and understanding, so true. Principle three, nonviolence seeks to defeat injustice, not people. Principle four, nonviolence holds that suffering can educate and transform people and societies. Definitely. Principle five, nonviolence chooses love instead of hate. Yes. And then principle six, nonviolence believes that the universe is on the side of justice. And then to the beloved community. This is nice. It goes down the stairs. My tennis shoes on there, y'all. 
Let me get this. Oh, I can't even get this in the thing, but it's a big script. Right, and okay. Non violence, non existent. Alright, so here's a church. Again, cannot go inside right now. And I say right now, hopeful that it will open back up one day. Ebenezer at this church. Let's see. They might actually let us in. I don't know. I don't even know if it's open today. It's Sunday. So, it's the history of the church. Yeah. The epic sign. Alright, so we got the larger version of the older church. More of historical. They used to do tours in there. Yeah. In the summer, all these trees. around here this is his national historical park and there's the church <clears throat> the visitor center it's an area where you can actually sit down and the trolley so we're actually about to head back we got a notification from the restaurant we're going to eat at because they had a two hour wait. So we put our name on the Yelp list and we're like 31st in line, but it said we need to check in in 30 minutes. So we're going to go ahead and head back and go eat some brunch before we start headed back to the airport. Centennial Olympic Park doing our circle. There's the Ferris wheel. I'm sure it has another name for it. <laughs> but this definitely brings back memories. I remember after I had my son, me and my friend came and stayed here because we had a event for two days with our coach right there. And then we came back again when baby Avery was here. He was about maybe six months, I think. And we had a very good time, went to the other Omni Hotel about 30 minutes from here, maybe a little bit further, and then came out with my mom that time. And it's definitely nice to travel with family. So let me turn this around and talk to y'all. So overall, I've had a very good uh, Atlanta trip. I definitely can say that Atlanta and visitors too um, that were here for the conference treated me like I was at home. Uh, very welcoming. The weather is actually perfect and what I'm recognizing, oh, it's names on the ground. <laughs> what I'm recognizing is that I can choose to travel during certain seasons and unless I'm going to an event in which I invested in or I'm part of in terms of speaking, I choose not to go to events. Um, I mean, I'm not choose to go to events, but I won't go to places where it's extremely hot because the last time that I came here, it was almost 100 degrees. And as you can see, there's no, shade <laughs> so needless to say me my mom and Avery were after a while miserable <laughs> because it was extremely hot but a lot of things have changed like we can't do the CNN tour the CNN store is closed um, MLK stuff is closed and you just think to yourself like where does the funding come from is it really the pandemic that caused all this or is it that 
they can't find help, people can't work there, like what is the deal? Uh, because it definitely takes, I'm gonna say the flavor out of being able to visit for the first time and then you can see stuff but you can't experience it. Um, and that's a part of the history um, of coming here. So it's pretty loud. I guess they're cleaning the ground. And right here, it used to be water where the kids can go and play during the summer and it would just be water sprouting up and then it would do like a little water show. So we're gonna go by the Olympic sign over there, take some pictures and head out to the airport. So that is our trip.